Hello everyone and welcome back to another interesting session of COA. Well, no matter how many exemplary numerical problems that we solve, from an aspirant's point of view, we tend not to get satisfied until we solve actual previous year questions. So totally respecting that perspective, in this session, we are about to solve an extraordinary previous year question on associative mapping. So, let's get to learning. So, this is the question we will be focusing on today. It came in Gate Computer Science 2019 paper. Now, before getting to the question, let's talk a bit about the examiner's perspective. The paper setters of the exams like Gate, ISRO, NET or any other competitive exam for that matter, don't select the question just for the sake of setting the question paper. Some of the times, they try to comprehend the conceptual clarity of the aspirant as well by setting some questions which are extraordinary. And this question right here is one of them. I'll reveal the oddity of the question while solving. So the question states, A certain processor uses a fully associative cache of size 16 kilobytes. That means the cache is of 16 kilobyte size and it's a fully associative memory mapping technique. The cache block size is 16 bytes. That means each line of the cache is of 16 bytes. Assume that the main memory is byte addressable and uses a 32-bit address. That means the smallest addressable unit of the memory is 1 byte and the physical address is of 32-bit. Now they are asking us about how many bits are required for the tag and the index fields respectively in the addresses generated by the processor. Now this is the sentence where the question becomes the odd one. We are talking about the fully associative memory mapping. Then again in the question itself, the bits required for the index fields are also being asked. Now think about it. The index fields are nothing but the line number bits which are relevant for direct memory mapping but not in terms of fully associative mapping. So the question setter is trying to comprehend our clarity regarding fully associative memory mapping concept. So let's try to solve the question now. Now the cache size is given as 16 kilobytes which in terms of bytes is 2 to the power 14 because 16 is 2 to the power 4 and kilobyte is 2 to the power 10. Hence, 2 to the power 14 in terms of bytes because it's a byte addressable memory. So we need to convert each and every unit to byte. Now the block size is given as 16 bytes, which for the sake of mathematical calculation can be converted into 2 to the power 4 bytes because 16 is 2 to the power 4. Therefore, the block offset is 4 bits. Therefore, for line number, log 2 to the power 14 minus 4 base 2 bits will be needed. Now, why is so? Because the cache size in terms of byte is 2 to the power 14 and block size is 2 to the power 4. Therefore, in order to calculate the number of lines in the cache, we need to divide the cache size by the block size, which is nothing but 2 to the power 14 minus 4. Now applying log base 2 in front of that, we get the value as 10 bits because 14 minus 4 is 10 and log 2 to the power 10 base 2 is nothing but 10. Now during our previous discussions, I have already mentioned that the line number bits are also sometimes referred to as index bits. Now the physical address is of 32 bits. Therefore, we can easily find out the number of tag bits subtracting the block offset bit from the physical address bits, which is nothing but 28. Like I said earlier, we are dealing with fully associative mapping and in case of fully associative mapping, the physical address is split as tag bits and block or line offset. Now we have already calculated the tag bits as 28 bits and we also found out the block offset is of 4 bits. Like I said earlier, we are dealing with the fully associative memory mapping and in case of fully associative memory mapping, we don't really require any bit for the index field because there are no index fields specified in the PS split. Hence, the index bits are not really required and for the tag, we require 28 bits. Therefore, the option D where for tag 28 bits has been given 
and for index 0 bits are specified will be the correct choice for this question. So now do you understand why this question was formed? It was framed in such a way so that the paper setter can test our conceptual clarity. Also do remember this fact that the line number bits are also known as index bits. So that was all for this session. I hope we learned something new and equally interesting. So from the next session, we will begin the next cache memory mapping technique. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.